Hello Turn community and welcome to this video in which we will discuss cross-chain interoperability with XEM, which is a cross-chain message format used for communication between blockchains. One of our developers, Alexander, has written a well-composed blog post on this topic, so visit our website to check that out. And as always, before we dive in, I'm Joseph, the developer relations here at Turn. And if you have any questions along the way, let me know and I will do my best to answer them. XEM isn't a full protocol, so it relies on horizontal relay chain message passing or spree to enable communication between blockchains using different consensus algorithms. Meaning each XEM message is a set of instructions that can be interpreted by the XCVM executor. Through this mechanism, functionalities such as cross-chain transfers, remote transfers, and remote execution can be triggered between blockchains that support them. This enables development of multi-chain dApps that rely on a single implementation of functionality rather than a smart contract for every layer 2 technology. Let's dive deeper into how cross-chain communication using XEM works. An important first step is to ensure that the blockchain's XCM configuration is correct. Otherwise, the desired cross-chain asset transfer and remote execution would fail. These are the key elements. Asset Transactor enables the XCM executor to perform asset transactions such as withdrawals, deposit and transfers on-chain. Barrier defines which commands are allowed to be executed on-chain. The trader sets the rates of each asset which can be used to pay fees for XCM messages. The assets need to be registered as sufficient on chain and we will cover more on this in the following sections. Allowed reserves specify which assets the chain can use as reserve for reserve asset transfers. Allowed teleports specify which assets can be teleported to the chain and from which blockchain. Note that enabling teleports from blockchain A to blockchain B does not necessarily mean that tokens can be returned in the same way. That would depend on blockchain B's XEM configuration. And lastly, execute filter defines which extrinsics allow remote execution using XEM. For example, Asset Hub enables parachains on Polkadot, Kusama or Rococo to register their assets by sending XEM messages which create an asset and set its metadata. XEM channels. In order for two blockchains that support XCM would be able to execute messages, they would need to have open channels between them. In order to open a unidirectional channel, a blockchain needs to send XCM instructions that initiates the opening and the chain that receives the request needs to submit an XCM transaction to the relay chain that approves the channel opening. Both operations need admin privileges or approval in a governance vote and after approval on the receiving end, Parachain A will be able to send messages to Parachain B. Now let's continue with XEM multilocation. An XEM multilocation is a format in which foreign assets identify a universal location. It consists of two parts, parent and interior. Parent is a number that represents how far the relay chain is from the destination chain. The value would be zero if the asset is on the same chain, one if it is on a sibling chain and two if it is on a chain that is in another ecosystem. Interior could have a value here which refers to the native asset of the chain. Otherwise, it would be represented as an array of junctions that would specify the asset location within the original blockchain. Let's continue with sufficient assets. Assets that are not sufficient require the account that transfers them using XEM to also hold a sufficient amount of the native token from the receiver chain, which will be used for paying the cross-chain transaction fees. The sufficient assets though, they do not require accounts that either sends or receives the tokens to hold the native token. Cross-chain transfers. There are two types of cross-chain transfers currently available, teleports and reserve asset transfers. Teleports work by burning the asset on the sender parachain and minting the equivalent amount on the destination parachain. The sender though cannot control how the assets are being used in the receiver end. So a good practice is to only use these when there's a high degree of trust between the two blockchains. For example, for system and relay chain or asset hub and parachain for their native tokens. Reserve asset transfers rely on trusted third locations such as asset hub to keep track of the transfers. The sender transfers the desired amount to the reserve and the receiver has to withdraw it by minting a derivative. When the token is being burned on the receiver chain, the balance will return to the sender. The future of XEM and cross-chain interoperability. 
Crushing operations are for now mainly used for bridging fungible tokens from one chain to another. XCM allows for many other use cases that will likely appear in the nearest future. Here are some future improvements that we might see. Better documentation. Currently, most information about how to use XCM is scattered between blog posts, stack exchange questions, and documentation of different blockchain projects. This slows adoption. But if some form of go-to documentation would appear, it would make it so much easier to actually use this new technology. More extrinsic for commonly used XCM operations. At the moment, Pallet XCM only supports teleports and reserve asset transfers as standard operations. For every other use case, developers need to create custom XCM messages. Expanding remote execution use cases. Currently, it's quite limited and mainly because such executions can be a potential source and security vulnerability. Cross-chain NFTs. While they are technically supported by XEM, it does not ensure that the metadata that is stored with them will be accurately replicated on the destination. Let's end with Turn and XEM. Currently, Torn has opened bidirectional XEM channels between Basilisk and Asset Hub on Rococo, and this chain configuration allows for transferring tokens such as TRN, ROC, and USDT between the parachains. Once this functionality is proven to work successfully in production, we can easily update the XEM execution configuration to support assets between other parachains as well. That's it for today's topic. I hope you found it both valuable and helpful. Don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.